It's a good day. You can't complain about the weather, can you? This is the day the Lord has made. They all are, but we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, glad to see y'all here this morning. Just want to make a brief announcement. Uh, would like for you to remember the Bilbrey family in your prayers. Uh, Bobby passed away this past week. Also. Uh, we have a quarterly business meeting after services, right after services today. There'll be several things that are we're dealing with uh, financially and missions opportunities. So if you would attend that and let your voice be heard. Not very loud, but let it be heard. <laughs> Any other announcements we need to make today? Bow with me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you again and we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to worship. We thank you for the opportunity we have to exalt your name. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us in order that we might have remission of sins. And Lord, you have given your son a name that is above every other name. We praise the name of Jesus today. I pray that during this service, we will worship you in spirit and in truth, that we'll have an attitude of gratitude. Lord, we pray that you would give Brenton and the message you'd have him bring. May your word may, may it be made alive and real to us. Father, we pray that you will draw us into a closer and deeper walk with you. We ask now that you guide and direct us and forgive us where we sin, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brother Mike. Yes, sir. Come on up, kiddos. Feel like the kiddos. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning, all y'all. Good to see y'all. Everybody good? Now, y'all kind of helped me a little bit. For those of you who are old enough to go to school, y'all are out now for the holiday, right? Yeah. School's out. Y'all excited? Yeah. Summer, summertime. Well, this weekend kind of marks the official, unofficial summer vacation, okay? Now, summer doesn't actually begin until what, middle of June? But we say summer begins because school's out and it's Memorial Day. 
And this is the kind of the time when everybody goes and starts traveling and going to the lake. Any of y'all ever go to the lake? Okay, you kiddos coming in, y'all can come on and join us if y'all would like. I'd love to have you up here, and I'm just getting started, so you hadn't missed much yet. So y'all like to go to the lake, you like to swim, you like to boat, canoe, and all those kinds of things. Huh? Try it? Yeah. Anyway, so I brought something, and y'all might be able to tell me what this is once I pull it out of here. Okay. I had to get me a different life jacket. Life jacket. And what do we do with these? Leave them on the shore? No, you put them on you so you don't Oh. And what is this supposed to help me do? Swim? Huh? Keep floating so you don't drown. And it helps you swim too. It helps you swim too. That's right. Wait a minute now. If you know how to swim, you don't have to have one? Are you sure about that? Oh, it depends on how far you're going out. So if I'm just going out to where you are, I don't need one. But if I'm going out to the back of church, I better wear one, right? Oh, okay. Well, let's see if we can clarify that a little bit better here in a minute, okay? I'm going to tell you a little story, okay? And it is summertime, and you will be going swimming and you'll be going to the pool and to the lake, and you'll be riding boats and other things, and so you're going to enjoy these things, and uh, hopefully you'll be safe all the time. I want to tell you a little quick story, and then I'll relate the story to and the Bible. Are, like life changers. God is our life changer. You're getting ahead of my sermon. Did you look at my sermon? No, I <laughs> oh, good for you, sweetie. Good for you. I'll let you help me here in a few minutes. I heard a story about some men that were going to go fishing on the lake. And so as they got ready to go, all the men got their life jackets except for one man. And he didn't get his life jacket because he said, I know how to swim, swim really good, so I don't need a life jacket. And the weather was pretty. So they went out on the lake and started fishing. And then all of a sudden, a storm came up, and the wind started howling and blowing and the waves started hitting the boat and the first thing happened the boat turned over and all the men were thrown in the water all the men that had their life jackets on made it back to the shore safely the one man that didn't wear a life jacket knew how to swim he drowned he didn't make it now I'm going to tell you something here, and, and this might hurt a couple of people's feelings at very well because it's pretty personal. <clears throat> this past week over at Fairfield, they had graduation, like Grosbeck had graduation Friday night. There was a senior boy that didn't get to graduate because a week before that he drowned in the lake. And then there's another man that drowned up here in the river because he jumped in the river and got hung in some brush and didn't come back up. So you see a life jacket is very important for all of us at all times, okay? Or, or if a baby, they be afloat. Yeah. Do you know that last year, in the year 2022, there were 76 kids between the age of 0 and 17 that drown in the state of Texas. That's a lot of kids, 76. So far this year, just this year, first five months, there's already 17, like y'all, that drown, okay? Huh? 20, oh, excuse me, 20. So that's even worse, okay? That's already drowned this year, okay? It takes less than one minute to drown, okay? Most children drown in a swimming pool, believe it or not, okay? But you can drown in your bathtub, okay? Seriously, okay? Can you swim in one of those little pools that only like, are like a few feet long? You, you have to be very careful. Uh, the bottom line is this, be very careful around water, okay? Now, let me tell you the rest of the story that this relates to. 
if your nose gets under that water and you can't breathe, you can drown in less than a minute. Your lungs might fill up with water, and that's it. You can't breathe. So we have to be careful. And I know this sounds a little negative, but I'm going to try to encourage you at the end to make sure you wear your life jacket, okay? And then we're going to let her help me out a little bit, okay? Now, <clears throat> in John 3.16 in our Bibles, <clears throat> it says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. And that person is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our life saver. Okay? Now, y'all said this was a life jacket, which technically I guess it is, but it also can be called a life saver. Okay? Because that's what it does. It saves lives. Okay? But Jesus Christ is our life saver against what? Sin. And sin is in our world. Okay? Now, it'd be not very wise to go out in the lake without a life jacket, right? I saw a life jacket. Okay. It, was the one that was the it can be round. It can be round, yeah. It's also not wise, guys, to face the storms of life without Jesus Christ as our life saver. Okay? Because we're going to have storms that come in our lives, troubles, okay? And if we don't have Jesus as our life savior, then it's going to be very difficult for us to go day by day without a Savior. You all understand that? So just like not going in the water without a life server, we want to be not foolish and make sure that we always go through life with Jesus Christ as our life saver. Okay? Our life saver. Now, I've got a couple things for you. Does anybody here have a birthday during the month of May? Ooh, got Four? Okay. When, I, when we get through here, y'all stop right here, and she's going to give y'all a birthday book, okay, for your birthday. But for y'all being such good listeners and good petitioners and taking part today, I'm going to give you a whole slew of lifesavers. Now, what I want you to do with these, huh? No, no. <laughs> She's trying to get y'all all a lifesaver. <laughs> y'all can do that at the end of the service, okay? What I want you to do is every time you take one of these lifesavers and put it in your mouth, I want you to think about who is your lifesaver. Who is it? God. God, Jesus Christ, okay? So every time you put one in your mouth, you thank God for being my lifesaver, okay? And I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to pass these out, and then you guys that's got birthday. You go see Miss Allison, she's going to give you a book. And then Brother Tracy's going to give you a, another lifesaver. Why aren't you, Brother Tracy? If they want it. They, they're going to want it. Okay? Now, the, the whole thrust of everything we talked about is Jesus Christ is our life Savior. Okay? Everybody understand that? Okay. Let's pray, and then we'll go from there. And y'all been great listeners, and thank y'all for being great listeners and taking part every Sunday. That's really, really special. God, I do thank you for these children. We thank you, Jesus, for being a life saver for all of us. And Lord, I pray at this moment, if there's anyone in this building who does not know you as their personal life savior, Lord, I pray that today will be the day that they come to know you and they surrender their life to you. Lord, we ask forgiveness for our sins. Be merciful to us and watch over these children, especially around water and every day of their lives, Lord. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all get you a life and then go see her if you got a birthday I'm and a, go over there and see Brother I'm Tracy. I'm a lake person. I'm a beach person. You're a beach person. Okay. And, and what, what do we always say? Huh? I'm going to tell you why I raised my hand. Okay. Why did you raise your hand? Because my birthday is today. All right. We got a happy birthday up here today, this young man. What's your name there, man? You're welcome.
Stand if you would. Let's sing down at the cross.
Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house. We're here to glorify your name, to raise you up. You're our Father, our Creator of all heaven and earth, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the mercy and the grace that you've given to us for our sinful spirit. Lord, thank you for this group of believers that we may lean on each other, to teach each other, to mentor each other, and that we may reach out to this community to serve you, Lord. Lord, please be with Brandon as he brings this message. If there's anyone here that does not know you, just open their ears and their heart that they may receive you and boldly step out to come make a profession of faith to you, Lord. Lord, be with each of us as we go through this week. Help us to resist the temptations of Satan and just build a wall of protection around us. Help us to meet each day knowing that you, your son Jesus, died on the cross to save our sins. And we may be with you. Lord, please bless this offering that we take up now. Help it to glorify you and to serve you. These things I ask in Christ's name. Amen.
Drain, go that way. Club 56, that way. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Oh, Y'all are talking a bunch this morning. Good. I like to hear it. All right, before uh, we get started this morning, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all the ways that you love and bless us. Father, I pray for this time, Lord, that um, it will be your words. Father, no one needs to hear from me this morning, Lord. We need you. We need you so much. I need you so much. Father, reign in this place today. Lord, as we talk about moving past fear and not living a life of fear, may we walk boldly out of here today, trusting completely in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we we are continuing our series on the miracles of Jesus. If you got your Bibles, Mark chapter 5 is where we're going to be at today. If you do not own a Bible, there should be a blue Bible around you somewhere. Uh, take it, use it today, take it home, read it, right? So uh, that, that is our gift to you if you do not own a Bible. Uh, but we're going to continue our studies on the miracles of Jesus. Today we're going to be looking through the lens of living a life without fear. Jesus is going to look at a man today and say, do not be afraid, all right? And so we're going to talk about what that means, how that looks uh, as applied to our own lives, because that is something that is really, if we're honest, hard to do, to live a life of not fear, completely trusting in Jesus. Now, somebody uh, sent me a video uh, a few few months ago. I wanted to share it with you all this morning, this video uh, was entitled, uh, Giving God the Will, but also being a backseat driver. All right? And so, okay, do we have this? Here we go. Father God, I will trust you and let you take the wheel. God, go left. God, where are we going? Go left, go left. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Ooh, God, can we go over there? Hey, is that my boy Finn? Okay. All right. I saw that, and I don't know about you, but I related to that video way too much. All right? Because there's so many times in my life I'm like, God, you have complete control, but can we do this? Oh, let's make sure we stop here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And so I I, I felt that video way too much, and so I wanted to just share that with you all this morning. But as I mentioned earlier, the the sermon today, where we're going to go today is we're going to look at, Jesus is going to look at a man. And in the midst of his greatest chaos, in the midst of his greatest fear, in the midst of his greatest doubt, Jesus is going to tell him, do not be afraid. And so we're going to talk about how we can do the same, how we can not have fear, how we can move forward, uh, how we can not be afraid. And Jesus is going to call us to do three things this morning. One, he's going to call us to believe what is true. Two, he's going to call us to eliminate what is not. And three, he's going to call us to trust his timing. All right. So if you got your Bibles, Mark chapter five. Let me just personally say that this miracle that we're about to read uh, has quickly become one of my favorite miracles in all of Scripture. Um, me and Brittany really get, recently got into The Chosen uh, and, and have been going through and watching The Chosen. And this scene depicted in The Chosen I thought was just incredible. Uh, so Mark chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 35. Let me give you some background about what's going on uh, as we're reading. Brother Tracy talked about it last week. Um, a man named Jairus has come to Jesus And he's told him his daughter is sick. And he asked Jesus to come and heal his daughter. Now, as they're going to to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, um, a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years, who has seen doctor after doctor after doctor, not been able to be healed, finds Jesus, works her way through the crowd just to be able to touch his cloak 
so that she would be healed. She knew that if she could just get near Jesus, touch his cloak, she would be healed. And so she makes her way through the crowd. She touches his cloak. Uh, Jesus feels the power come out of him. Ask, who was it that touched me? And this woman comes forward, and Jesus tells her that your faith has made you well. And so Jesus, as he's going to Jairus' house, delays and performs another miracle on the way. And so we're going to pick it back up as he continues to his house. We're looking at verse 35. It says, While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear. Only believe. All right, my first point this morning about how we, we can walk through life, not be afraid, how we can not live in fear. Because I don't know about you, but fear is something that at times can overpower and overconquer my life. All right, now if you, if you know me, uh, one thing, I'm extremely arachnophobic. All right, I don't deal with spiders. All right, I, I can't be near them. Uh, true story, yesterday or uh, last week, Brother Tracy had to come out and kill a spider for me, right? It, it was on, say it again, amen, amen. It, was on, it was on my door handle, and I was just like, not today, Satan, right? Like, we're not doing that. And, and Brother Tracy had to come kill that spider, because I ain't doing that. But there's other fears, like past superficially that I have in my life, fears that I'm not going to be able to live up to what God has called me, fears that I'm not going to be able to be the husband and father that God has called me to be. There, there's fears that I deal with in my life personally. And so Jesus looks at this man in the midst of probably his greatest fear. He had just found out that his daughter had passed away. And you've got to imagine the thoughts that are going into his head. Right, like if we had just gone faster, if we had just gotten there, if we hadn't have stopped and helped that lady, we, we would have got here and she would have been made well. And Jesus stops and he looks at him and he says, don't be afraid. Only believe. Everything about this situation told him it was hopeless. His daughter has been pronounced dead and Jesus tells him not to be afraid but believe because faith and fear do not mix. Faith and fear do not mix. They're opposites. There's a lot of great combos in this world. Some would say peanut butter and jelly. Some would say bacon and eggs. I would continually argue peanut butter and chocolate in the form of Reese's makes a heavenly combo sent from God himself. right? But there, there are a lot of great combos in this world, but faith and fear are not one of them. They do not mix. Jesus didn't tell him, don't try to believe and be afraid at the same time. He didn't, say don't, or he didn't say try to believe and figure it all out. He didn't say try to believe and make sense of the delay. He just said only believe. That he had to get rid of that fear before he could believe. Jairus was supposed to believe the word of Jesus. Everything else told him the situation was hopeless. But Jesus' words brought hope. So in the midst of our greatest fears, in the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our doubts and trials, the first thing we have to do is we have to believe what is true. You have to believe what is true. When I say what is true, I'm talking about the Word of God. What does God say on it? What does God say on the matter? You've got to cling to what God has said. This is why it is so important to know the Word of God and be in the Word of God. To, know what, to believe what is true, you've got to know what is true. You've got to be in the Word of God. I love the, the Spurgeon saying of a Bible that, that's falling apart usually belongs to a life that's not. That if you are, you are in the Word of God and you're writing it on your heart day in and day out, and you've got to know it and you've got to believe it and you've got to cling to it because this world will throw you so many curveballs. I got the honor to be able to speak before the seniors um, this last Sunday. And one of the things that I told them is that you are going to leave this and you're going to have trials, tribulations, struggles, hardship. Welcome to adulthood, right? Like that, that's, that's what I told them because I don't want anybody to be misinformed and especially Christians. There's a false theology that if you are a Christian, your life is going to be sunshine and rainbows. That's not what Jesus says. 
Jesus very clearly states that in this world you're going to have troubles. You've got to know what the Word of God says. And you've got to cling to it. I'll tell you that oftentimes when I preach, I'm preaching to myself. More often than not. What I'm stating and what I'm saying up here, I'm trying to make my own heart believe. And that was a prayer that I prayed this morning. Like the man before Jesus, like, um, I believe, help my unbelief. Because if, let me, I believe in transparency when I preach and being honest and real with y'all about where I'm at. Um, we, we, we shared last week with y'all that um, we're expecting our fourth child. Um, and we're, we're, we're really excited about that. And obviously, like, I, I'm so excited. Like, uh, one of my greatest honors and privileges in this world is being a dad. Like, I, I, I love that. Like, I, I want, like, a, you know, the, the Bible talks about that blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Like, I want so many kids, right? Like, I've already got two at home that beat the crud out of me on a daily basis. Like, what's, what's a few more, right? They, they just love to wrestle. Like, why, why not just add a few more to it? Like, I, I love, love being a dad and, and, and having children. But with, with this, because of everything that we went through with Shepherd in this, in this pregnancy, there, there, there's, if I'm honest with you, there's fear in my life. And so I've had to continually ask myself, what does God say? 2 Timothy 1.7 has been my verse. It's what I've clinged to, for I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That if I have a spirit of fear that is not from God, and I've had to continually remind myself and my heart that that fear that I'm feeling is not from God, and for God, what do I know that is true? I know that God's good. I know that He loves me. I know that God knows the destination. I don't, but He does. And I know that His Word says that the good work that He began in you, He will see to an end. So I have to remind myself of what is true. When you're going through difficult times, what do you know that is true? And listen, there's a lot of times in this world, um, Tim Keller passed away this last week. One of the greatest preachers I've ever had the privilege of listening to. One of his, his sayings that I love is that you will never know that Jesus is all you need until he's all that you have. And when this world is crumbling down, you're going to grab onto something. So many times we grab onto things and they're not going to sustain us or hold us and we're just going to keep falling. When you grab onto the word of God, it's firm. It does not change. It's a foundation. It stays there. What do you know that is true that you can cling on to in the midst of your greatest fears? You've got to cling to those things. When I was in college at Baylor, I was going through a really rough time in my life. And I used to take the promises of God and I would write them down on little sticky notes. And each day I'd look up a new one, promise of God, write it down in a sticky note, stick it up in the bathroom. All right, I, I had my bathroom by the end of the semester just covered in these sticky notes because I was surrounding myself with what I knew was true. You've got to fill your life with what you know that is true. This whole situation was chaos for Jairus. All he had to cling to was Jesus' words. Don't be afraid, only believe. So we got to cling to what is true. we got to believe what is true in the midst of our chaos and the fears and our, and, and our doubts and our, uh, and our dismay and all of this. We've got to believe what is true. Secondly, we've got to eliminate what is not. The story continues and it says that, uh, but overhearing, uh, or, and he allowed no one to fo- verse 37, and he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people wait, weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and the mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. You see, it was customary in the day that um, when a, a person would die, you had professional mourners who would come in, people who would weep and wail loudly and people who would play music, all right? And so they, they had already called them, they come in, and all it did was just add to the spectacle, add to the show. They didn't actually care 
about the person they had just lost. It was just a spectacle. And Jesus did not want anything to do with these people. All right, Jesus drove them out so that they would not discourage the faith of Jairus. He eliminated what was not true in the moment because he personally knew a greater reality that he was about to raise this girl from the dead. That she was not dead but merely sleeping in Jesus' eyes. And listen, we have got to begin to eliminate stuff in our lives that produces fear and doubt. Because if we do not, if, if we do not cling to what is true and we allow doubt, fear, and stuff, this stuff to breathe that in our lives, what's going to happen is we're going to begin to doubt our beliefs and believe our doubts. Let me say that again. If we don't cling to what is true and start eliminating things that are not, what's going to happen is we're going to doubt our beliefs and believe our doubts. And the crazy thing is, is that our doubts can seem so logical at times and our beliefs so illogical. That it seems to almost make sense. God doesn't care about me. God's abandoned me in this moment. God's not here. God's absent. And it seems so hard to actually believe that God is present in that moment. And so what happens is our doubts almost seem logic, logical to us and our faith seems illogical. Jairus in this moment had so many doubts going on. So many doubts that arose from the chaos around him. If I was to ask you the simple question, like, what is the source of your doubts? Like, where are they coming from? I love the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 13, 20. And I especially love the book of Proverbs in relationship to the company that we keep. Uh, Proverbs 13, 20 is one of my favorite verses in all of Proverbs. It says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but, a, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Listen, sometimes we, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, the people that we allow in our inner circle that speak truth into our lives can arise, arouse doubts in our lives. I've heard it put like this. If, we, if, you, if you walk into an elevator, an elevator has a max capacity sign on it, right? That there's only so many people that can gather on an elevator at once. That if you get over that max capacity, that elevator is not going up. Listen, in your life, there are people that you allow to speak into your life that put you over that max capacity, that are not going to allow you to go to the next level, that are not going to allow you to your faith to rise. I'm not saying that we never interact with people who are far from God. We are called to. We're called to run to those people. I'm saying you need to be careful about the people that you allow in your inner circle to speak truth into your lives, that when you have an issue, who do you go to for advice? Who is speaking truth into your life in those moments? I have done my best in the last 18 years to surround myself with friends who will continually push me to know God more. I honestly do not know where I'd be without them. People, when I'm struggling, that I can ask at the drop of a hat to pray for me. And I know they will. People that when I'm slipping will actually call me on it. Proverbs tells us that wounds from, a kiss, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. That you don't need people in your life that are continually telling you what you want to hear. You need people in your life that will tell you what you need to hear. Maybe, and listen, I don't want to step on anybody's toes with this, but maybe I do. Anyways, media, like, media fuels fear, all right? And listen, I'm not talking about, we're called to be informed, but media creates fear and eliminates hope. Jesus provides hope and eliminates fear. We are called to be informed, and we're called to know, and we're called to fight for what is right and stand up for what is right. And we better do that in this day and age right now. Well, we don't dwell on things we can't control. You've got to eliminate sources for doubt because fear will arise from doubt. So if I was to ask you this question about what doubt are you believing right now? Is it that God is not good? Is it that he does not care about you? And where is that doubt coming from? What doubt are you believing 
And lastly, and this is, listen, what I'm about to ask you to do next, what the Word of God is going to talk about next, is the hardest thing I'm going to ask you to do this morning, and I recognize that. I recognize it because it's difficult for me to do. Let's look at this. It continues, and it says in verse 41, Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talithi kumai, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that, they, that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. So we've got to cling to what is true. We've got to eliminate what is not. And we've got to trust his timing. And that's hard. That's hard. But if we're going to live in faith and not fear, then we're going to have to trust God's timing. I love the way that, that Jesus addresses this little girl. That Talithi um, was the way a father would address a daughter. It translates little, little girl and it also translates little lamb. It's like a pet name a dad would have for his daughter. And I love this. And I think an aspect of Jesus that we don't talk about uh, enough is his, that Jesus was, was probably fun, he's kind. He's sweet. And like, how do we know this? Because little, kid, little children flock to him. And that little kids don't flock to somebody who's not those things. And the tenderness at which Jesus speaks to this little girl right here just gets me at times. That little lamb, it's time to wake up. And she does. And there's times, listen, when, when Jesus, we're going to get to Lazarus. It says that Jesus shouted at the grave, Lazarus, get out of that grave. And he does. Because, listen, there's times that we need the Lazarus kick in the rear end, right? But there's also times that we need Jesus just take us by the hand and say, arise. It's time to get up. And Jesus, in this moment, takes this little girl's hand, says, little lamb, it's time to get up. And she does. Listen. And he raises her from the dead. Listen, Jesus didn't fail Lazarus. And tarrying, or Jesus didn't fail Jairus and, and tarrying to his house. He just needed to stretch his faith a little farther. And if we look at the parallels of these two stories uh, of uh, the woman touching his cloak and, and, and Jairus, um, Jairus had, had a 12 year old daughter that he had lost, that he had 12 years of sunshine that were about to be extinguished. The woman had 12 years of agony that seemed hopeless. Jairus was an important man. We don't even know the woman's name. Jairus was wealthy. The woman was poor, so that she had spent most of her money on doctors. Jairus came publicly to Jesus. The woman came privately to him. Jairus thought that Jesus had to do a lot to heal his daughter. The woman thought, all I need to do is touch his garment. Jairus responded, or Jesus responded to Jairus instantly. Or Jesus, sorry, responded to the woman instantly. But Jairus, after a delay. I think that many of us, we feel like we're living in that delay, right? We feel like God's doing miraculous stuff for so many other people around us. We're seeing this. We're like, God, that's cool and everything, but come on, like, I've got my thing. Come on, like, let's go, like, hurry up. I've got my thing over here. We're seeing Jesus doing so many cool things for other people, but we're like, come on, like my thing's here, like let's go, let, let, let's do my thing. I say that we live in an instant world, fast food world, right? When we want it, we get it. The crazy thing is that God doesn't work like that. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old at home. And I don't know how many of y'all have gone on extended car rides with a four-year-old and a two-year-old before, but it's quite the experience, right? Amen. Amen. There'll be times when I'm going, it's like the other day we went to the zoo, and I'm so excited to take them to the zoo, right? I, I'm so pumped. We're going to the zoo. It's going to be fun. I love going to the zoo with them. They love looking at the animals. I love looking at the animals. Like, let's go. Like, this is going to be so cool. 
And, and so we're going to the zoo. And as we're going, uh, Bishop, my sweet four-year-old, I found out is a warrior. And, and he, he needs details to feel secure, right? And so at one point he asked, Dad, do you know where you're going? Fair question, right? And I'm like, Daddy knows where we're going, buddy. Trust Daddy. Daddy knows where we're going. Trust Daddy. Daddy's going to get you there. And listen, let me ask you a question. What's greater, the gap between Bishop's understanding and mine, or the gap between my understanding and God's? I'd say it's the gap between my understanding and God's. And listen, there are going to be times where uh, the things that he says that I'm going to have to just trust because he's the one that said them. Because he's my heavenly father and he knows where we're going and I don't. You see, if we only obey God when it makes sense, then he's not our Lord, he's our advisor. And we make this proclamation that Jesus Christ is our Lord, which means he's in control, I'm not. And there are going to be times when I'm afraid and there's going to be times when you're afraid and you're going to be in the midst of chaos. You don't understand what's going on and you don't know why you're going through what you're going through and these doubts are going to arise and fear is going to overwhelm you. And I can tell you, and I can tell you from personal experience, you're going to have to trust God because he's the one that's driving and he knows where you're going. So what do we do? We cling to what is true. What do you know that is true? Hang on to it. We eliminate what's not. And we trust his timing, not ours. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all the ways that you love and bless us today. God, I pray for anybody in here, Lord, that is experiencing fear, that is experiencing doubt and chaos in their lives, Lord. God, I pray that they would cling to what they know is true, that you love them, Lord, that you're good, that you've got their destination in mind, and that you're going to get them there. Father, may we eliminate those things in our lives that cause doubt to arise, that cause fear to arise. May we trust your timing. May we trust in the one who is in complete and total control. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.